This is the theme of setback and misery. Annie calls Paul a liar. Select frames. And so Paul Sheldon is asleep. Um, not a care in the world other than to go to sleep. And this is where Annie comes in. She has finished reading the book. And she comes into Sheldon's room. And um, she basically accuses him, call, calls him a dirty bird, and that misery can't be dead. She can't be dead. And so uh, she said, I can't believe you. I can't believe you that you did this. And this is a negative view of his work that, that she gets into, calling him a dirty bird, basically... Uh, charging him as a liar and he's shocked to see her right because she's talking about misery can't be dead and then he talks about how it was 1871 women often died in childbirth and Annie is saying I don't want her dead you murdered her you murdered my misery so this is a setback for Annie but it's also a setback for Paul because all this time leading up to this moment, she has had high praise for his Misery series as well as for him. And for her to take it in this way is shocking. It's a shock to his system. It's almost like in the same way that he's fractured in the bed, he has fractured her understanding in killing off Misery. Because why would Misery ever die? I mean, she didn't die in the second book. She didn't die in the third book the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and eighth. So there's this expectation from the fan base that he's going to keep it going. Why else wouldn't he keep it going if it was worth doing a number two, a number three, a number four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And so um, um, this is a setback for her because it fractures her understanding about who he is as a person and the Misery series. And then it's a, it's a setback for him because he is shocked by her behavior, especially since she's been praising him. And uh, this is the first time he's getting a negative view about his work, at least from what we have, have discovered. And so this is where she's saying, um, you murdered my misery. I don't want her dead. And so that face that... Kathy Bates gives it's just so it I'm quite sure it took a lot of energy to get that face right as an actress but I thought it was just so interesting as a frame uh, consideration and so her response is affecting um, his ability to get well in the bed from from the time he has been there, he's 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 had good opportunity to get better. She hasn't hindered that really in any way. But this is basically the first time that she's hindering his recovery because at the end of the bed, she's shaking the uh, she's raising and lowering the bed up and down to the point that it is um, affecting him and causing pain for him. And so then she goes, um, you know, kind of crazy. And she finds something to uh, throw up against the wall. It's some little uh, shelf, plot, uh, pot shelf. And she throws it up against the wall. And she's essentially saying, I thought you were good. You're just a liar, a lying, dirty birdie. And then she reveals herself to Paul Sheldon and what she's been doing and what she's been up to. We know that she has uh, doesn't have the right intentions, but he hasn't known that, right? But when he tried to kill off her misery, which is which is the equivalent equivalent of her happiness, that's when she reveals who she truly is. And um, she said, "I don't want to be around you." um right now and um you're just a lying dirty birdie and this is the first time she's using the word lying 
or calling him a liar. And on some level, when you think about Paul Sheldon and how he didn't want to, he, he didn't want the misery series to become his life. And he doesn't feel like he's a writer in writing the misery series. So we have to assume that he considers himself a liar, right? That that he wants to write more serious work. So that means that everything he has been doing up until this point hasn't been serious work or work that he could be proud of. So that means it's a lie. That he started out with an, an intention to write something big in order for him to get into the business, make some money, make a career out of it. But it took off, you know, unexpectedly and and he had to produce 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 and then uh the more he had to produce the more he felt like a lie because even though he was writing the books himself he felt like they they just did not fully represent him so she calling him a liar is is not only projection on her part because she's been lying herself but it's also a reflection of who he might think he is in terms of personally, professionally. That's why sometimes I, he, he looks at her and how shocked he is um, um, at how she just is crazy over his books. And But he doesn't have the same attitude towards his own books. And I would think that if you wrote something of that magnitude that you will be just as happy or more happy than your fan base. And so here's where she's saying that um, she didn't call the doctor, she didn't call the agent or the family, she never called anybody. Nobody knows you are here. And she says, if, if I die, you die. And then after that, she leaves the room. So this is where she's fully revealing that she's been lying to him the whole time. She didn't give other aspects or, or examples of it, but it's just enough for him to take note of the fact that, that he is trapped. He is really, really trapped. And if he don't make a decision to, to try to get up and get out of there, he could die there and at her hands. And so then the revelation of that, revelation that she's been lying the whole time and that she's basically trapping him here, uh, gives him the type of face that is very sort of, I can't believe this is happening, you know, incredulous. All right, like, subscribe, and visit. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell for more discussions. You can visit my YouTube channel for further film analysis is favorites film analysis as the title of the channel uh, you can always send me an email and ask me a question regina y favorites at yahoo.com my overcoming setback five keys for entering and exiting correction book uh, will become available around october 2021 i'm still doing some editing the book does not focus on film analyses but i use uh the content that, that i created for the book to support my um, my perceptions of setback used as a theme in select films. So when the book becomes available, I will send out a notification video audio. Um, thank you very much for visiting the channel.